subtract what we say to one another really, really matters. Remember the old saying, sticks and stones were what? Then you know that's a lie. You know that's a lie? Bones will heal. You, you hear what I'm saying? Bones will heal. But words have lasting effect. I remember stuff that, some, that, that somebody told me a long time ago. Told me I was nothing and I was never going to be nothing. Well, I pray that I'm proving them wrong. <laughs> but those words eat you up. Psalm 133, beginning at the first verse. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, and then went down to the skirts and his garments. It's as the dew of her. And as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded blessings and life forever. In a Time article written by Dr. Reverend Rob Schneck, August 6th, just recently. He spoke of the tragic lesson he learned about the power of words and the power of words that are spoken by leaders. And I won't read the meat of the article as he directed it towards another person in some respects of political con consideration. But I want to quote the substance of his writing. So listen to this. Real good. Yeah. As a national anti-abortion leader for more than 30 years, I, re I routinely <coughs> use inflammatory language from the podium at rallies for the activist anti-abortion organization Operation Rescue. I depicted doctors who performed abortions as murderers, Callous profiteers in misery, monsters, and even pigs. Then someone on the fringe of my movement shot and killed Barnett Slipian, an OBGYN in Buffalo, New York, whom I called out his name in demonstrations and clinic blockades. Slipian wasn't the last person to die or be gravely injured by individuals who may have taken literally what I thought of at the time to be harmless rhetoric. I now live with great sorrow and regret that it took me so long to learn incendiary speechifying can too often turn deadly. We all need to learn this terrible lesson that I did. That words matter, even to the point of life and death. That's powerful. Look at what he did, what he said, and the lesson that he learned. Because I know that even reading this article here in a different way might may be difficult for some people to know or understand. I'm not trying to um, hail on one side of an aisle or another. But my purpose is for one thing, to help us learn and understand that love matters and that grace in every circumstance matters. And the words that we speak, both positive or negative matter. You hear that? That's a lesson for all of us to learn. There are railings and arguments in families 
with couples and marriages, with siblings and with people, because we have decided that we are right. I wasn't expecting to get a lot of amens from you. <laughs> we, we expect, we have decided that our right is right. And we will, we will use rhetoric that is destructive and will tear people down. Even people that we say that we love. Somebody say love matters. Love matters. It does. It does. The demonstration of that love is wrapped up and typified in who we are. Many and most of us come from some form of, of dysfunction or another. And we can easily decide that we, in one way or another, are going to build up walls, we're going to cover ourselves, we're, we're going to even use words to keep people at enough of a distance to where we won't get hurt anymore. We will use words to begin to make, to begin to create our decisions. This man, a minister of the gospel, decided that what he believed was greater than who he believed in. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You got to get this. Because we, in Christendom, often fall prey to some of these things. Even as I read this article, it can be skewed in a different way, and, but my purpose is to help us to see and understand that love really does matter. We as believers who attach the word Christian to our names can often hail on one side of always being right as opposed to living like Jesus who cared about all people and who loved all people and who afforded grace to all people. For whatever reason, and I struggle with this sometimes, for whatever reason, Jesus has called me to be a purveyor of love, grace, and peace. Not a doormat, not a weakling, but a source of the move of God and unity to all men. I believe in it. I believe that we're all supposed to walk together as one. No matter where we came from. No matter the pigmentation of our skin. No matter what side of the tracks we, we hail from in one respect or another. And I have made the decision that I'm going to cry out loud and spare not. That I'm going to speak what I believe and stand. Martin Luther King once said that faith is taking the first step even when you can't see the whole staircase. There comes a time when silence is betrayal. Our lives begin to end when we become silent about the things that matter. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Love matters. Grace matters. And our words matter. Here in this passage, David, a man of war, with blood on his hands, Realize that the vanity of war and wanting to be the only one whose opinion is right came to a summation that love mattered, that grace mattered, and that his words mattered. It's amazing. If you understand David's life and then read these, the words of this psalm and others, he came to a 
point to where his right didn't matter. But how he loved and treated other people is what mattered. The greatest passage of scripture or the most well-known passage of scripture is that God so loved what? God so loved what? The world. The world. Oh, wait now. Not the church. Don't, don't misunderstand me. Don't go back and say, Pastor said that God doesn't love the church. That's not what I'm saying. This, this, famous, this famous scripture says, For God so loved the world. It was an inclusive statement. It was a statement that said, I love everyone. Jesus said, I didn't come for the ones who were well, I came for the sick. <laughs> he wants us, and, and then we, as we get better, not well yet. But as we get better, now we become the Christ for the world, the Christ for other people, the Christ, the ones who now the world can see that love does matter, that grace does matter, and that our words are filled with Christ. Got to get it today. Proverbs fifteen four. I'm not going. I'm not going to go long here. Proverbs fifteen four says, "Gentle words bring life and health, and a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit." You ever have? You ever have some nasty words just spoken to you? And you, you just feel like you just beat up on the inside. Proverbs 16, 24. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy to the body. Proverbs 18, 4. A person's words can be life-giving water. Words of true wisdom are as refreshing as a bubbling brook. My friend Dave often quotes John 38, John 7, 38. He that believes on me, not, not he that is a Christian, he that believes on me, the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Words matter. Words matter. I, I, I feel encouraged to speak this to you today because conflict is always around us. You ever feel like the one you love the most is the one that you can't hardly stand? Don't look at anybody. No one, don't turn your head. The one who you love the most is the one who might say some of the nastiest stuff to you. And then we're supposed to say, oh, I love you too. <laughs> you, you, ever, you ever find that the one who you love the most, you say some of the nastiest stuff to them? Oh, I know you, you're smiling now. <laughs> I'm not trying to start any arguments, don't forget to do it. But, but I am saying to you that words matter. We cannot just say, I love you, but. The levels of communication are vital in any relationship. And it cannot be, I love you, but. In the, the conjunction, the proper conjunction has to be, I love you and. I love you and I want to share, I want to communicate this with you so that we can share more love and more grace and be able to go forward in our lives without any reprisal.
Love matters. Grace matters. While words are not. Anybody in the room today? <laughs> Our words matter. And if we are ever going to be a people that answer the words, the prayer of Jesus, we have to take into consideration the words that we speak. We have to take into consideration and an understanding that Jesus died for every sin. Even the sin of that knockhead person that you just can't stand. Yeah. We accept the fact that he died for our <laughs> sins. But he died for their sins too. So before we have made this decision, Because 
We're going to deal with people all of our lives. I hope. And if we don't grasp it, we will never, we will never answer the prayer of Jesus. So, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Where our efforts are going to be to speak love, to speak grace. Even in the hard times, you know, it's easy to love somebody, you know, when when they act like Connie all the time. <laughs> but sometimes they act like Mikey. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> and words still matter. How we speak words, what we say. That now begins to make all the difference in the world. Father, we come to you now. And we ask you, Lord, to allow for this next move to take place. That we would be a people <coughs> consistently cognizant of the words that we speak. That our words would line up with that that we say, with the love that we say that we have. That our words would be filled with grace and mercy. That our words would not be condescending and destructive. That our words would not be filled with religion and opinion. But our words would be filled with peace because love matters. Because grace matters. And because our words matter. Allow this, allow this to be the crowning of our lives. Allow this to be the diadem that is set upon us. Where others would look and say, they must know Jesus. Let it happen, I ask you. It won't be easy, it'll be hard. With the ones that we even love the most. But Lord, allow for your spirit to come in and intercept those words of destruction. Allow for your spirit to mix with our hearts for your love now prevails over and over and over. We thank you. We believe it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're coming around the table. Communion. And the table of communion should be the table where we all come together in love and unity. Because it was the blood of Jesus that paid the price for our sins and the sins of the whole world.
before we receive the Lord's Supper. I, I'm going to ask, and I'm going to lead in this prayer, because I'll, it's my desire that we come to this cleansing table with our hearts at least open towards repentance and forgiveness. None of us has done it all right. And all of us have said words that we love to rewind and take back. I just want to pray just right here in this moment that there would be power in the blood. That there would be power to change who we are. The moment that we are prepared to say something out of pocket that this will be a typifying moment that says, yes, my Lord has purchased my sins on Calvary, and now I want to be a purveyor of love, grace, and the right words. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us of the negative words that we have spoken to other people, over other people, and even to ourselves. Lord, we come to you and we ask for that forgiveness. That we will be the people who fall under the anointing of love, grace, and peaceful words. Forgive us, Lord, of the things that we've taken so flippantly and allowed to happen. Let the church arise and be who you are to us. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This be ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes again. Would you stand with us? Would you face the outside wall nearest to you? Starting from the rear, come down the side aisle, receive the bread. Come and go. Love Jesus. Because it matters. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, a
perfect soul.